Right, the, I've had I've had quite a few um, say they can't make it today. Keith said he might be able to make it. Sufi's away today, so I think this is going to be it today. Okay, now we are talking about March. Okay, so it's March. Uh, any marches throughout 1942 to 1945. We could include 46 if 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 it's appropriate, because uh, I I would think 46 they were still the War Graves Commission was still uh, finding the graves or trying to find the graves. So that didn't end 45. So we will include 46 as well. Um, I, d I did. I can't. I can't think what I did with it there. But I. I had a. I had a book on the War Graves, finding the graves. That was quite. That was quite interesting. Not very nice to read, but that was quite interesting. Um, how they went about it. And a lot of the POWs did stop behind after the war to help. Um, so, so that didn't end 45, so we, we'll include 46 as well. Um, right, so the biggest thing in, in March, of course, was the fall of Java and, and Sumatra, yeah, and, um, China. So I think I'll I'll rely on Kevin today, Kevin and Tim, because you, you both know quite a bit about Java and Sumatra. Although I did the Java index, it was mainly collecting the names and putting together where they were, what Java party they were in, and everything. So, um, although Kevin, did you did you read about a uh, uh, an airport? where the Japanese got to the airport and a load of the a load of the RAF personnel went missing. Oh no, it weren't the RAF personnel, it was the 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 gunners who were oh, at the um, that's this one. Oh we've got the yeah, book on they, it. Yeah, they went missing, didn't they? And yeah, presumed was. killed by the Japanese. Yeah, yeah. What date was that, Tim? Um, I think it was the end of February. I seem to remember all twentieth of February, twenty second of February, something oh. like that. I think. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure. But there was quite a yeah, few went missing. <clears throat> there was um, the gunners from Forty uh, Eighth Light Anti Aircraft. Mm. <laughs> how, how, how many did they think were killed by the Japanese, Tim? Can you remember? Oh, no, you should have sent me an email. No, to... <laughs> no sorry, <laughs> mate. Down, you have a look, you have a look at that, and I'll, I'll pass you over to <laughs> Kevin, and you you have a look at that while Kevin is just having a chat. All right, Kevin? Okay, yeah. Can yeah. we welcome well, Susan first, please? Oh, we've Susan got Susan Potts. Us. Yeah, all right, Susan. Susan. Right, welcome to us. Um, you can see all the names on board. Matt hasn't got his name up. Uh, <laughs> I'm, on, I'm on the phone because I can't. The computer's not oh, yeah. <laughs> Right, that that's Matt. Um, Barbara, you you can see. Tim, you can see, and Kevin, you can see. So, um, well, well, I think this is your first one, is it, Susan? It is, yes, yes. In fact, yeah. I was panicking, thinking I wasn't going to get on <laughs> and do anything. <laughs> oh, well, you know, just enjoy it. That's just um, a chat. But that's nothing, you know, we're not, uh, we just have a chat and maybe a laugh now and again. Um, so I'm handing, I'm handing this all over to Kevin because Kevin's going to talk about Java, the fall of Java and Sumatra. Go, oh, Kevin. There you go. Okay, right. Um, well, I had actually did a little bit of thing on about your jaw uh, Sumatra. I, I didn't realize I was, you wanted us to do a bit about uh, Java itself. <coughs> Obviously, Java um, capitulated, uh, surrendered at the same time in March. But the, the, um, the Sumatra side of it, which I'll go through now because I'll have to uh, 
I've got this stuff about Java on the screen. I can drop that onto uh, onto the screen for it. This take a screen share if you like. But I'll go through the uh, the, the Samarta thing because I've actually written that down. Uh, as you know, the uh, the Japanese invaded Pelembang, uh, primarily obviously for the to take the over the oil refinery there, and uh, the Dutch army. Uh, obviously, they they were like sort of pushed back by the Japanese, and they sort of retreated to the more central and northern part of Sumatra, and uh, they were going to like hold out, hoping to get supplies and or maybe evacuated by the forces from Java. But as it turned out, Java surrendered, and uh, the forces in Sumatra, the, the Dutch forces, um. They realised there was no hope of uh, getting supplies. There was no hope of being evacuated, and then the Japanese invaded the very northern part of Sumatra. So now the the Dutch were actually going to be attacked from both sides, north and south. So um, they actually surrendered unconditionally on the 29th, 28th of March. Uh, but uh, what I was surprised of, I was doing a bit of reading up for this and. Uh, when they did actually sur unconditionally surrender, the main army obviously were taken prisoners. But there was actually small groups of guerrillas continued fighting. Now I didn't know this, uh, and they kept going for a, another year. And it wasn't until actually March 1943 <coughs> the, the the last group of guerrilla fighters actually either were captured or surrendered. So they, they actually fought on until 1943, which I was, I was quite surprised, but that was actually March as well. So it, it was a bit of a coincidence, if you like. Um, the, uh, the Dutch men who were caught, or the Dutch army which was caught, a lot of them ended up on the uh, Samaritan Railway. Uh, uh, we've, we've done a thing on the, on the Samaritan Railway, which is a terrible thing, but obviously, like uh, Barbara um, mentions, the, like the Samaritan natives, and they were shipped some uh, Java natives were shipped in to work on that railway, and it was absolutely horrendous. The number of uh, Javanese and Samaritans who died actually clearing the, the jungle for the build that railway was absolutely terrible. But that was the, uh, the March surrender in uh, March 28th, was the end of Samara. That, after that, that was it. Uh, the whole of Samara then became under. Japanese control, apart from these guerrillas who kept going till 1943, but there would have been like just small groups. The um, um if you would um, think that that was a somewhat a bit, I'll come back to the job as I see. I've got a bit of there. If it could give us a little bit of time to read that, but going back to uh, some other things that happened in March, uh, as you know, I, I do a lot of research at the fathers. Uh, Regiment, which was the ROC. Now, their men were cap some were captured in Singapore, some were captured in Samoa. Actually, some of them went to Sarawak, so they were all over the place and they got captured. But the men who got captured in Singapore, they actually left Singapore with D Force, which uh, left on the round about the 22nd of March. So there were six of them men actually went with D Force, and the the uh, other thing which I'd like to pick up on is um, Barbara mentioned this at the last meeting regarding uh, the nurses that got massacred on uh, Banka Island. Now, the man that um, Vivian Bullwinkle met up with in the jungle, he was called Private Kingsley, he was actually in my father's company, uh, the REOC. And uh, he was on a ship called the Pula Suji, which was sunk by the Japanese Navy. And uh, some of the men who could swim, some had a, there was like a boat got there. And the ones that reached the beach first were their men that were actually killed by the Japanese army. And Private Kingsley was actually bayoneted by the Japanese. And he pretended to be dead and crawled into the jungle. And that's where he met Vivian Bullwinkle. Then the two of them realized, obviously, that he was seriously <coughs> dead. Uh, she had been shot as well. And they made their way to uh, Muntok. But on the way there, they got picked up by a Japanese naval officer in a car. And he drove them to Muntok, where they were obviously split up. She went into the women's camp, and he was put into the men's camp. And he was able to relate his story 
he actually named some of the men that had been murdered on the beach and obviously said what had happened to the nurses. But unfortunately, he actually died on the 24th of March and uh, of, of his wounds, basically, because he couldn't get uh, the treatment that he required. So it was another thing in the March calendar, I feel like, that uh, unfortunately, Private Kingsley died in the uh, Buntock. He was actually in the hospital there. Uh, so that's uh, that's my bit for that. But uh, if you give us a bit of time to uh, have a look at the Java thing, if you could go on to something else, I'll, uh, I'll have a look at the Java. Yeah, talk, can I, talk can and I, make, I, a, yeah. can I make a suggestion. Yeah. Yeah. In that we've got another meeting during March. Why don't we come yeah. that on that day? Because we need to save some things for March. Perhaps yeah. Until that day. I don't know should we? Yeah. Should we do Java on the next meeting? Yeah. On the 18th. On um, the 18th. Yeah. Yeah. Um, good, good, well, idea, uh, good idea, Ronnie. I can look a few things up. <laughs> yeah. Well, there was um, one boat of Romisher who, which got sunk, wasn't there? There was three thousand on board. Yes. Yeah. There was. Uh, I can't remember the name of it. But there was there was three thousand on board, and they were on the way to the Smarter Railway when they they actually got sunk. Um, but I can't remember the name of the ship. Um, but the, of course, you know, with with the British and and Dutch and, and anyone in the forces, uh, records were made. But with the Romisha. No records were made, so you don't actually know any names who were on board the ship. Although we know there was about three thousand on board, and there was very, very few escaped. Um, it's horrible because I mean their families never knew what happened to them. Um, at least we do know what happened because the records were kept. Um, all right, some mistakes were made, but mostly the records were kept. Um, but um, yeah, D Force. I've had a lot of D Force come out lately. You know, uh, D Force um, the march uh, to the railway. I've had a lot of them come up lately. I've, I've done about three this week. All D Force going to the railway. Um, but uh, no, anyone else about March? Well, Anything else about March? Taken up from this idea. This is the um, new sheet that I do every month for uh, our group. So I cottoned on to it, and, and good old Wikipedia, this is what I'm going by. Um, so I've sorted out, well, yeah, you need laugh. Yeah, yeah, I'm laughing, yeah. Well, yeah. Well, I've got one for March 1941, and that yeah. was that um, the Japanese spy, Takeo Yoshikawa, arrives in Honolulu uh, and begins to study the United States fleet at Pearl Harbor. So that mm. leads us on to, you know, what happened um, you know, in the later that year when the bombings took place. Um, so I thought that was an interesting one and, and slightly divergent. So, uh, conscription started in the United Kingdom uh, on March the 5th, um, and that was to include women and men up to the age of 45. I just thought that was a nice diversity because sometimes. What it's year was that then, Barbara? That's, oh, sorry, that's 1942. 1942. 1942 conscription yeah. started, so I thought that yeah. was just an interesting sideline. Yeah, so that must and be that all all our all our fathers who went to Singapore, the Far East, weren't conscripted. No they volunteer. actually joined. Or yeah, my dad, the my dad, my dad, my dad said he joined with six. Six of them went to Colchester to to sign up, and I just thought they were conscripted, but of course they weren't conscripted, were they? They they actually joined absolutely look who's popped up mm. anyway um yeah well it's a sorry it's a little bit interesting but we've got a bit, a bit on a bit bit on the prescription uh, conscription prescription um, yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. can i have right. some pills please just to say very quickly <laughs> is that certainly in my father's case and it may well be in yours ronnie it was the regiments who recruited, hadn't even gone to a central um, recruiting thing, certainly in 1939. Mm. You know, they actually, they actually yeah. joined direct into the regiment. 
Yeah. Anyway, sorry, Barbara, but carry on. No, no, that, that's yeah. Fine. The, and, uh, the, yeah, the si- yeah, just a minute, Barbara. The six of them that actually joined with my dad, uh, they actually caught the train to Colchester because I, I've got it in his notes. Um, so, so they didn't actually, although they were all Royal Norfolk's, they signed up at Colchester, which is a bit strange. You just thought well, Cambridge. Is, is, yeah, is, Colchester. Is that where well, maybe, sure yeah. Or, or 18, there, 18th so. Division, maybe. 18th Division? Mm. Headquarters? Possible. Yeah. Possible. But anyway, um, they, they actually made a pact to keep in touch. And um, when we were in the shop, that was just before Dad died, um, which is about 1998-ish, um, a chap came in the shop, and I sat in the shop... Uh, writing some pages, writing some fecal pages. And um, I felt someone standing behind me, and he said, is that Fred? And I, I, I actually had my dad's page on the screen. And I said, uh, yeah, it's Fred Taylor. So he said, uh, oh, we, we went to Colchester to sign up together, and I've been looking for him ever since. I couldn't find him. And that that day, he, uh, was the first time he'd ever been in our shop, and I actually had Dad's picture on that screen that day for him to see it. And so from that, him and Dad met up. That was jo- that was Jock Simon, you know, who wrote Hell in Five. Um, and uh, he, he actually met up with Dad, and that was in one of the – Daily papers, the big daily papers that they met up. The last time they'd met was at Chongkai, and Dad was playing for England football, and Jock was a sub for Scotland. Because Jock came to Scotland, came to Great Yarmouth. Um, you know, Great Yarmouth was a big fishing port, and the Scots. Cooper, he was a cooper, making the barrels for the fish. He came from Scotland to work in Yarmouth, making the barrels for the fish. He was a cooper. Um, yeah, just, just, that's, <coughs> go, on, go on, Barbara, that's enough for me. Right, um, back to uh, Mark. Uh, somebody had put on Facebook that um, about the Japanese, uh, sorry, Tokyo, the firebombing. So just looking that mm. up, that's actually 75 years ago tomorrow. So I thought that was interesting for us to mention that mm. um, following on from that Facebook um, posting today. Um, so there's that. So it depends what you want to know. I've, I've separated it out into uh, all the years. And obviously, it's only Wikipedia that um, I've been borrowing this from. Thank you, Wikipedia. Some of those things won't be accurate. Some of those things, no. <laughs> a lot of them are missing, but um, it made life but, easier for me. But and also, it gives you some ideas, though. So. Yeah, Give you some ideas. To researching or looking into other things. So it, it is quite useful. Yeah. yeah. Um, Nagoya, because that was the other place that was firebombed. That was the 11th of March. Um, yeah, there's lots of interesting things. Oh, Ord Wingate died on March the 24th, 1944, in a plane crash. Um, what else? Yeah, lots of, lots of different things. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, that's, that's me. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I do, see do Keith and, uh, has arrived. So that, yeah, nice. Keith is there. Yeah, uh, and Keith's feeling better now, Keith. Yeah, get in there, Ronnie. It's it's been a bloody horrible six months with um, yeah being told that my results are one thing and then they're not, and then they are, and then they're not. So yeah. uh, I got some good news from my doctor yesterday, uh, last Monday, even though he'd been involved in a car crash on the Saturday, um, on the Sunday, sorry. So thankfully he was okay, and I'm going to see him tomorrow. And we're just going to have a chat through things. But he said, yeah, he said, yeah. you're okay. He said, there's nothing nothing to worry about, so don't go concerning yourself um, and worrying unnecessarily. Come in with yeah. a chat and look at, your medica- look, look at your meds and see how we go from there. The problem so, is, Keith, we're, we're getting older, and we don't like to think <laughs> we are, but we are. <laughs> I'll tell you what, yesterday, I was, I was at Kew yesterday. I didn't go last week because the week before, I'd almost got taken out by an Arctic. Um, and it wasn't the driver's fault. It was the high wind on the motorway just pushing his lorry sideways. And it was well, is this another, another crash? It, 
almost. Yeah. Um, um, oh, I started dear. driving along. It was, a, it was oh, there's my super it's a Sainsbury's lorry. And I was just coming up to it and I could see it just gradually creeping into my lane. I thought, shit, he's not even indicating. Does he know he's, it's happening? So I fortunately could pull over and, and, you know, and I saw the, then suddenly went, moved back in. And it was the wind. It was storm yeah. finished. The wind was so strong. Yeah. Um, but I went up yesterday and I, I got there and I thought, I mean, it was chaos at the archive yesterday. It really was. And I thought, you know, I don't know whether it's me, but there's a lot of Asian people suddenly appearing at the archives. Yes. <laughs> you know, um, mm. and there was, there's quite a quite a few people. I don't know what nationality they are, uh, whether it's Japanese looking for stuff on on um, their people, their men who were killed, because I know they have been doing that research there uh, to try and find where they're buried. But it just seems there's a lot of a lot of Asian people suddenly up there, and. Um, yeah, it was a it was a good day, I have to say. Got there and back quite uh, quite safely, so well worth doing. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm, I'm just logging my other computer in because um, there was quite an interesting thing I wanted to show you. So I'm just logging that in so I can show you what it was. Um, right, March March 1943 on the 14th. D force started going up onto the railway. Yeah, we were right. just talking about D force. Yeah. yeah, that's right. I just uh, just grabbed my. Uh, there was quite yeah, a few right. trains, though, wasn't there, Keith? Was there five? Uh, let's have a look. Nine. Nine. Just a minute. I'll just stop. Days. I'll just stop my camera and my mic, because otherwise I'll get feedback. How many was there? A total of nine. Nine and six hundred and fifty yeah. each. Yep. Um, ten, about six thousand. So five thousand men. Yeah, yeah. yeah five thousand men, nine train loads. Oh dear, dear. And a lot of those, it would appear. Notice I say it would appear, because I'm not going to say it definitely happened, because you don't do things like that. They seem to be assimilated into the work groups that were already there. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, which is why, you know, you think, oh, OK, right, they'd find F force got on the railway. And that's totally different. F force and H force, obviously. Um, yeah. yeah. All right, I've got, I've got on the screen. Um, during the week, uh, I'm just trying to think who did it. Someone, someone sent a, new, uh, a message posting about the flag. Uh, did you see all see that the, the the flag for the 75th anniversary? Yeah. So, so mine. Yeah. So so I looked. <laughs> Don't damage yourself, mate. Um, so I I I did look up. Um, can I find it? Let me just. Right. right, that was Ribbon of Poppies, ah, and yep, yep. I, I had a job getting to their store from Rib Ribbon of Cop uh, Poppies. Uh, let me just find, I found it this morning, and I've gone over it. The store is quite hard to find. Um, I find it. You talk a bit, Keith. You have a chat, and I'll find it. Okay. Um, I thought yesterday I'd be on here and think I could give you some really good news because I found mm -hmm. in the colonial office files, and you know, you 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 think I've seen this, but do I really believe what I'm seeing? So I pulled it. It was a colonial office file, and it was index cards for civilian internees. Wow. Oh. And I thought, yeah. how fantastic. How brilliant. Yeah. Uh -oh. Right. That's as far as it goes. So don't all, don't all start jumping up and down again. Hooray. Basically, they were files kept by the colonial office. The cars were made up by the colonial office and they cover civilians in Hong Kong. And it's really to do with correspondence received. It's nothing to do at all with the camp conditions oh. or anything like that at all. So that was a bit of a heartbreak. Um, yeah. So I thought, oh, well, you know, 
you should realize it doesn't always do what it says on the tin. Um, yeah. Another one that came up uh, that's very interesting, I may have to go back and photo photograph the report, was a report on coolie camps. And I thought of Barbara, I thought, oh, she'd be impressed. Um, and I started reading it and it went from basically November 1943 to the end of the war. And I thought, OK. But the figures are giving in there and assuming these figures are just for that period. And that I don't know, so I'm going to have to go and get the report and read it cover to cover. But if the figures are correct and it's just for that period, we are looking at maintenance crews. We are looking at over a thousand deaths. Sorry, over one hundred thousand mm. deaths. Yeah. Oh my goodness! And this is after mm. the railway was finished, and yeah. it oh. does in some cases break it down per butai. So you'd have um, a collection of men, for the want of a better word, or a battalion of men uh, or coolies under a Japanese commander and the butai or the battalion would be named after that commander and some of those broke down the conditions and the deaths and all the rest of it so it's quite mm. a an eye-opening report 72 pages long um but I, I've photocopied some of the, I've photographed some of the pages so I'll, I'll bring them along on Tuesday Barbara yeah you know, super I'll, I'll, try get, I'll try and get them printed out um, can I, I thought, can I just oh, ask God. those? How did they attribute those deaths? Were they disease or? That's you know? something I've got to have a good look at. It's mm. quite a number of them were, um, <clears throat> how should we say, either unaccounted for yeah. or desertions. Oh. And the Hopefully author of the deserted. report, <laughs> well, the author of the report did note that when they started exploring the areas around the camps, they did find. Um, remains. Human remains, which means that the desertions were not always successful. So I think we can possibly attribute most of those that they didn't make it. But I don't know. That's just me jumping to conclusions. Yeah. But, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, does anything record them actually being out there or anything like that? Because not that I've come people across. People need recognition. Not that I've come across, Barbara. I mean, it was if if they did, it was Japanese records, and thanks to the Americans saying thou shalt not do until the second of September, they gave the Japanese over two and a half weeks to destroy their records. And on the railway, they did just that. We know that from um, POW books where they say, oh, there were lots of bonfires suddenly in the camps after the fifteenth of August. So, yeah, well, yeah, I mean. but peace. When when we get to Sandakan, uh, at Sandakan, they made out false reports. Mm. And they handed the false reports in, didn't they? So yeah. the ones they'd, they'd killed on the marches, they made out they had diarrhea, diphtheria, anything, anything to, to, to make an excuse how they died. And that, 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 it's a bit silly, really, because you only had six Australians who actually survived out of the two and a half thousand. Uh, you ha only had six Australians who could report on what happened at Sandakan. And so they went to extreme measures to make out uh, health reports, death certificates, and falsify how they died. That's a bit strange, isn't it? Because you only had six Australians. It's a very, very, strange, men it's a very strange mentality. I mean, you look at it, it's like, I suppose, how can you put it? not joining up the dots for the want of a better term. Look at Balalay, all right? Yeah. So if you're going to have a war crime, you don't leave loose ends like the men left on Rabat. Mm. Yeah. You don't leave evidence like artifacts in the graves, and you don't leave mm. witnesses like the Chinese labor force. Mm. There's no yeah. way you're going to get away with that as a war crime. And no. you know, it's sometimes you, you, you are you really not joining up the dots are you really not thinking yeah. it through but when, when you get to Bailey but when you get to Bailey it may be that they didn't take sorry, go on, Tim. sorry Ronnie go on Tim you go on Tim I was just going to say it, it may be that when they were doing all this they never thought they were going to lose you could well be right Tim they did have yeah. victory fever didn't they you know I often wonder you know so, they, so they, just, they weren't that fast <laughs> Yeah, I, 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 I don't think you're wrong for a moment. I mean, I often think to myself, as I do with the Germans in Russia, if you had come as liberators and behave like liberators and not conquerors, 
Russia wouldn't have stood a chance. And nor would maybe America with its industrial might would have turned it. But um, well, we lost an empire, so we know the end result. But you sometimes think if you'd have gone, as, gone in as liberators rather than conquerors, um, how would things have changed? How different would things have been? Yeah, and but I that's that's what, yeah, that's what the Japanese said they were doing in the Far East. They were going as liberators yeah. to liberate the countries away from yeah. the Dutch or the British or whatever, and and really they treated the civilians terrible. I, I mean, so they went there to be liberators and 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 say, look, we've come to liberate you from the colonialism. <laughs> and unlike we said about the Ramusha in on that ship, three thousand odd. Um and and they left oh, whole yeah, camps. The, um, Junior uh, which one? Junior I was trying to think of the name. I couldn't think of the name. No one the Juno Maru. This was a one ship with a Ramusha on it. Um and there was three thousand on it. And I, I, I came across it about two weeks ago and I didn't make a note of the name. I'll have to have another look. Well, I've got it you written down. Thought... I've got yeah. it written down somewhere, so I'll, I'll look it up. And... Yeah, look it up and let me know what it was because I, I can't remember. But, um, I mean, they, they left whole camps on the railway <clears throat> that had cholera or whatever. They left the whole camps to die. Rumusha. They, they just walked away and left them. And these were the, the men or people they were supposed to be there to liberate. Yeah, you know, and, and they they just treated them like terrible. I mean, uh, at the, uh, and the Filipinos, I didn't realize they did it to the Filipinos. I mean, yeah, uh, yeah that you 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 were talking about the which does go on into January. The the Suk Ching uh, when they killed the Chinese in Singapore, that went on to January the eighth, I think, didn't it? Uh, didn't it, uh, Keith? I think that went on to the 8th of March. Oh, March yep. the 8th, yes, it went on for some Yeah, March the 8th, from the 28th of February. Yep. Just after the war, just after the surrender, and anyway. So, and the same thing happened in Hong Kong and mm. the Philippines. I didn't realize that happened in the Philippines. They actually went through the Philippines and actually killed the civilians there. Um, and they were supposed to be liberating. How can you do that? Yeah, I, I know. That's terrible. Anyway, yeah, this flag, this flag. Uh, I'm just going to put the. I'm just going to put the share on the screen. So let me just find it. It's well, just come out of the meeting, so I'm going to have to join it again. All right. Isn't coming up, is it? No. Ah, no, that's um, the wrong one. Let me just go for. Ah, there it is. Right, this is their shop, Empire Poppy Store, which actually, which, which actually um, was um, from ribbon poppies. Um, so this is all their stuff they're actually selling. Uh, but if you go through their store... There's quite a bit of stuff they're selling. I, li I like uh, I like the pillows. I've asked Jillian to get me a pillow for Christmas. How is Jill? Uh, she, yeah, she's uh, she's coming on. She's she's doing some exercises they gave her to do, and and she pulled her legs, so she's not walking too well at the moment. Oh God. Right, can you see that one? Yeah, there's the flag. Is it? Yep. Yeah. Right, VJ flag. It's ten, ten pound, and it's got on it V and VJ Day, so it's appropriate for VJ Day. 
Now, if you come out of that and go into the flag pack, or the pack, the anniversary pack, you get a... Oh, goodness. Yeah, you get a badge there, and you get the flag, and you also get another one, which has got VJ Day on it. 25th anniversary on it. And that's a pack which is fourteen ninety nine. I didn't think that was too bad, Keith. That's very good. And Barbara, yeah, I thought it was quite... For money, yeah, I've, I've, yeah. I've, I've ordered mine, and they've said it's been posted, but that was four or five yeah. days ago, so hopefully... Yeah, perhaps well, I've well. ordered one. I've ordered one, but uh, it's awkward because we're going back up the caravan uh, just to get Ginny and out of the house. I'll stop sharing, but uh, I thought that was quite interesting. And yeah, if you look and... In under ribbon poppies, you'll find it very hard to find this. You've got to look on under Empire Poppy okay. uh, to actually find their store. Anyway, I'll stop sharing and I'll close that one down. Right. Yeah, so that, that I thought that was quite interesting, you know, that's, um, particularly because, that, and that's quite a big flag, isn't it, Barbara? Yeah, well, it's not a fair. small thing. Yeah. No, no, I, I think it's really, really good. Yeah, and good value. Yeah, the value for that, yeah. yeah. Value. And all the yeah. packs of, three packs of poppy seeds in with it as well. So yeah. I'll scatter those yeah. wherever. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, yeah I, thought, I thought it was quite good. Yeah. Anyway, um, with, with um, Matt, have you got anything to say about March or anything? Uh, <laughs> I'm having awful problems with my computer this morning. Uh, I loaded blue jeans and everything went fine, and then it's 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 upset all the co compatibility settings, so I can't access what I was what I had for today. Yeah, so I'm, I'm off. Yeah, I'm like a stuck screen. It's 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 trying to test the pro blue jeans program to find out what's made it incompatible and stop everything working but because it stopped everything working it's not doing anything i've rebooted it twice. Yeah. It's still... yeah what i've had to do in the past matt is i've had to uh unload it and then start off again uh, because i've had the same problem but i can't yeah. I've do anything i mean i've had to actually turn off the mains to reboot it because it's 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 stopping everything from working. Oh. Well, you're on screen, so we're seeing, we're seeing your pretty face, so you're all right, mate. <laughs> right. Right, let's, let's move on to Tim then. Tim, we've, we've been, you've been helping me with a lot this last week, haven't you? Well, I, I've, got, I've got one or two questions. Um, you, you, you know you put up that um, extract on Facebook that had um, one of the camps and it had the sick people on it. Oh, yeah, you yeah. What, what I'm talking about. And you put in the thing that, um, which I've seen before, is W equals walking, uh, S equals yeah. stretcher. I've actually yeah. seen before, not on that list, a C for cot. But I noticed the list you put up, when you look at other pages, there's an L. And I can't for the life of me think what L stands for. No. Okay. No, I've, I've, some, only, some I've only seen, I've only seen, Keith, I've only seen W and S. Walking well, and stretcher. Look for, if you yeah. look at other pages than the one you put up, there's some of them have got L's. Not many. Oh. And I don't, I don't know what that meant. Got no idea. No. Right, no. leave that one. Um, no. I've got a very got quick no one. Idea. I've got a very quick one for um, Keith. Um, how are Cafipo getting on with the liberation questionnaires was the first one someone's asked me. But I do see um, there more being added. There's more being added. Um, um, we've got to the point, we've got I think, to the now. Point, I think no. Hello, so there's, a lot, there's an echo on the line, I think. I think that's Matt. Okay. Got to the point now where it's a case we need a we need a big push to get the rest done. But right. to be honest, Tim, if anybody needs a liberation questionnaire, ask and I will go to Q and do it. Right. I've got oh. I've got another another, another yeah. one on the liberation questionnaires. Um 
someone has produced a liberation questionnaire which is not on the Cafipo site but I'd expect it to have been because that section's been covered if you understand what I mean um, yeah. Shall I send you a copy, Keith, and you can... Please, because I know I've been tipped off that there are some liberation questionnaires for the Japanese prisoners. Wait for it, guys, in amongst the European ones. Uh, <laughs> no. Which means there's got those how many hundred European files to go through. Can, can you make a uh, note of this one, Keith? Keith, can you make a note of this one? I want... Um, that's a page I'm doing today. Um, and that would be handy to have the questionnaire. That's right. Herbert William Usher, U S H U S H E R, Usher. Yeah, what if you can, because I, I've near enough got it together, uh, and and Tim's been Tim's been helping me with the ships, and and Tim, the ship, mm. they were on both of those ships. The, the Java 16, part, Java Party 16, were on both of those ships we've been talking about. And I found out, um, pronounce them, Tim. Yoshida Maru would be one of them. One's the Usuri, I would think. The Usuri Maru was one, and the other one was the uh, Seishan, uh, Seishan. Yeah, they, they both left on the 22nd of the 9th, 1944. Uh, and they, they went via, they went via Manila, Taiwan to Japan. And we didn't know where this Herbert William Usher, which ship he was on. But, Tim, I found an affidavit on Roger's site, Roger Mansell's site, and reading through it, the POWs who went to Fukuga uh, 19B at first, and then it changed to 9B, um, I think, yeah, that was 9B, um, they, they did come on the US one. I'm uh, not, I can't pronounce it, but the one that begins US. Like. Yeah, but yeah. he, he actually wrote A double S, not U double S. All oh, right. Pronounce, pronounce but that was the same ship. Yeah, that was the same do, ship. Do you, think, do you think that's the one Herbert Usher was on then? Yeah, that must the have been because he said yeah. all the two hundred and fifty, uh, all the two hundred and fifty POWs that came into the camp with him were on that ship, mm. and that's that's in the affidavit. So, um, right. actually, yeah, that was quite an interesting affidavit because he gave out, they worked in the coal mine and he gave out, uh, the dates of the coal mine. The, they had three shifts in the coal mine, six to two, six a.m. to two p.m. The next shift took over two p.m. till ten o'clock. And the third one took over ten o'clock till six in the morning. So they had 24 hours <laughs> work in the, in the mine. And, that's, um, and he, he did, I mean, little things like the food, he talks about the food they had, but there was, in the end, there was 500 in that camp and they shared 22 huts. But they didn't eat in their huts. They ate in a communal hall, which is mm. quite strange. Yeah, they, they, they ate together. Um, that's quite a good affidavit. So, so on, if you have a look, um, Tim, because you were interested in the ships, it's actually on Roger Mansell's site on oh, the Cuckoo 9B. Oh, I may have read it. Is it from a chap yeah. called, uh, is, it, is it a chap called Marison? A gunner Marison? No. No, oh. let me find it. I've got, I've got it, it on my computer there's an, now. there's an interesting diary by him. And I can't remember which uh, regiment he was with now. He was a heavy artillery man, I think. But, but anyway, that's quite good. But the other thing, which I actually put up on the charity page, when I was looking at that site, there's a, there's a fan. There's a photograph of a fan. And it's got all the... Um, it's got his route home. Oh, well, it's actually got oh his, that's James. Yeah, did James do it? 
Yes, I well, think so, yeah. Yeah, J James yeah, Sinclair. Yeah. That was his father, Tracy Sinclair. No, I think this chap's called Mary. Well. Any, anyway, the, no, of course, that, I think that was a different Marison. camp. I think that was a different camp, yeah. but he had a fan, and that, I put that on his... Uh, oh, yes, no, no, his... no, I've seen that one. No, This is the first no, that time I've seen one. the one I actually put up. But it, yeah. it's actually quite good, because it, it's actually got the detail, and he's got T's, S, and Air, I think, for, for how yeah. he actually travelled between the places, and that's why I found yeah. out that oh, Nagasaki went to Okinawa, went to Manila. Yeah. Because yeah, he's that, 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 he, he that actually, chap's, yeah, that affidavit's name is Roy, <clears throat> that must be his nickname a little bit, Roy Broadway Watson. Oh, right, I'll have a look at that. If you, if you have, that's quite a good affidavit, because he gives loads and loads of information, and he yeah. said, he said in there that the Japanese guards used to pick up anything in the mine to hit them, anything, you know, whether it was a prop or a pickaxe handle anything but he said the civilians who worked for the mine were worse than the guards mm. he said they were worse than the guards their brutality was worse than the guards which you wouldn't have thought about you would have thought the guards were worse than the civilians yeah, it was normally the other way around wasn't it yeah but he says the civilians were the worst um, anyway uh, right Anything else, Tim? Well, I have, but let someone else go. <laughs> right. Keith? I've got some... I'm interested to hear what Susan's oh, connection, FIPO. Oh, Susan, Susan, yeah. Um, right. And I'd There's... love to know what her story is. Or yeah, go on then, Susan. Um, it's my uncle, my dad's uh, brother, Joseph Leonard Berry, B-U-R-Y. Um, he didn't survive, unfortunately. He died at um, Chunkai um, from malnutrition. Um, funny enough, some um, soldiers that did return said to my mum that he was so weak, they picked him up, put him on the railroad track and just ran the train over him. Okay. Now, that could just be stories coming out. There's no evidence to prove that or anything. So I can't go by his official um, um, death certificate is malnutrition and diphtheria. Yeah, um, yeah, uh, so yeah. I, 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 yeah I, did, I did read something like that. I, I read, I don't know if you read it, Keith, that um, uh, one of the POWs were in such a state, another POW asked, asked one of the guards to shoot him. And the, the guard wouldn't shoot him, so he let the British POW have British the gun, and, and he yeah, shot British him. PO, British POW yeah. had the gun, he shot him, and the Japanese tried to court martial him for murder. Oh, yeah. oh yes, I remember yeah. that one, yes. Yeah, yeah. I can't remember his name. He was, was it not uh, an officer? Did they not give it to an officer? Did he? he was an officer, and the officer committed suicide yeah. in the 50s. Right. Officer, obviously. Yeah. What, what, was it, what was his name, Sue? Uh, Leonard Joseph Berry, B U R Y. You can put it on your thing on your um, website. Have I, have I got him on there? And yes, on? you have on the candle thing, and he died 19th of August 1943 at Chungai War Cemetery. He's buried there. My father went in the 60s, 70s. Took him three days to get there from Burma, uh, from Bangkok, by uh, um, train, by bus, by boat. And I went, and from Bangkok, it took me three hours yeah. with the hotel car, with security chap, and the driver. Um, the big building they've got there now wasn't there when I went. I went about 1996, just before my dad died. Um, and um, I've got pictures of the grave and everything, but um, yeah, can, can you send them to me, Sue? Sue, can you send me the pictures? Um, you can either email me or or message them to me, um, because yeah. I, although I've got him on, I've got him in the 
um, Thailand to Burma railway bit, but I haven't got an individual page. The Thailand Burma bit runs from a database, so I'm limited to what fields I can use. Okay, so I can only use special fields. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll add a I'll add a page in the site memorial section, and then I can add loads of pictures. Uh, so if you send me the pictures, I'll do another page for them. Mm. While I'm yeah. here with you, um, my father had a scarf, silk scarf, with the um, country of um, Burma and the railway and all the rest of it. Not too sure he got that from, because people wouldn't have been sent home with those scarves, and yet oh, I've got them. I've no idea where, the, where it's come from. Would you have any idea? Yeah. No, what, what's that actually got on it? Because, I mean, although he died, he wouldn't have brought anything back, of course, so of he wouldn't not, have I sent know. it back. I did, and they wouldn't have sent home the survivors with these scars. So I've no idea. It's a silk scar no. with a map of Burma on both sides, so what have you, and, and Thailand. No, no, so. we, we've, seen, we've seen handkerchiefs. We've seen handkerchiefs with the picture of the camp on and all signatures round. Uh, my dad did bring home, on the way home, he picked up stuff from mum uh, because they stopped at Colombo. He, he, he picked up stuff in their market to bring home to mum, but of course he brought them home. I, I, I've got no idea. I've got no idea, Keith. I, I what do I do? Sorry, at the next meeting, I'll come along and I'll... I'll yeah, I'll bring it. Bring show. it and let us see it. Yeah, yeah please. That would be interesting to actually see it. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I... Yeah. Yes, please. Yes, please, if you can. Uh, but send me loads of the pictures and, and then I'll add them to a special page in the site memorial. I've got more space in there and I can add a lot more detail which I can't in the others because it's very limited to what I can put in. Um, yeah. Yeah, so pl please, if you can, what uh, regiment was he in? Uh, Royal Engineers. Royal Engineers, yeah. Exactly, the bridge. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. Send, send me a lot of pictures. <coughs> you can either um, email them to me. Uh, my 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 address is on the site, or you can or you can message them to me. And then uh, we will be away for another week, so don't expect it done straight away. I, I want to finish the one I'm doing now, and then um, then we are going away tomorrow. Uh, of course, Jillian is. Just to get her out of the house, to be honest. Yeah, but she's yeah. coming on, though, Barbara. That's she's coming nice. on quite well. Very yeah, nice. she's coming on quite well. I mean, this, uh, she gets herself upset now and again because she seems to step, take a step backwards. But um, it took us a long time. She was really incapacitated, wasn't she? And the oh, sooner you very, get the other, yeah. Hip, yeah. you know, for her. I hope the coronavirus yeah. doesn't put everybody back on the hospital waiting list because she's waited so yeah. long, hasn't she, Ronnie? Well, it depends. Um, yeah. You, you know, having having said that, it could well affect the VEVJ celebrations if it's uh, yeah, if it does yeah. start spreading. So they're saying they might ban collection of people. Yeah, you know, um, yeah, uh, football matches, um, theatre, anything yeah. they'll so, ban. Um, but I see Italy has really jumped, the death rate has really jumped today. It's jumped quite high. So, uh, I mean, it's, uh, they're having a really bad time of it in Italy. It'll um, be strange if the Olympics get banned, won't it, you know, uh, or postponed. Yeah, because, um, I mean, I don't know what, what you feel about it, but I think to have given Japan the Olympics at around the date of VJ Day was... Nobody ever thought about it. Oh, no, I, I, I don't. I don't. Yeah, I don't think they thought it out. I, 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 I think. No, I, I bet they didn't. 
but Japan say they'll go ahead with it no matter what. So I don't know what they're going to do if if people if if countries aren't going to send athletes or whatever. I can't I can't see. Yeah, that's going to be like the the Hitler Olympics, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I know we have yeah. to move forward. You know, I, I'm not one for saying that, you know, that, but it, just to have done it this year, this Japan, what, you know, yeah. it just seems... To be, to be honest, though, uh, yeah, yeah, I've come across this before. They sit at a desk and they think, oh, yeah, we'll do the Olympics. Oh, yeah, Japan wants it, yeah. And they don't go into Again. what they're doing it for. Yeah, they just yeah. don't bother. They, they, they just they quickly, we'll do this, we'll do that. But they're they're not practical. Some of these people, they they don't get off the backside and and do things. They they just the, decide the, yes that will look good. Yes, we'll do that. The greatest thing that Japan could do would be to say we recognise what happened seventy five mm. years ago, um, and this is our way of saying you know we're sorry for what happened. Let's move on and make reparation. Mm. Um, but would they do it? I know some of you <laughs> saw what I put on sorry, from. Well, um, like that's ever going to happen. Absolutely. No, no. <laughs> but, but, you know, we're yeah. here trying to make it happen in a way. And um, you, you saw, I think, a lot of you, what I put on from the, um, where, where it mentioned Elizabeth Van Kampen. And I know over the years that I've been in touch with Elizabeth Van Kampen, she used to go and stand outside the Japanese embassy every month yeah. on a Tuesday with a group of people to try and get the Japanese to at least recognise what happened. Um, yeah, and I've had a big response. Um, and I don't always put everything on so many sites, but I did put that one on because it made a good reading and it showed, you know, what brave people these have been to go every month since God knows when to stand outside the Japanese embassy and, and demand some sort of recognition and apology. Um, mm -hmm. I'm, you know, it, it's just, you know, awful. But um, yeah, big response. People have really sort of read it and realize you know here we don't do much um i mean i have asked to go to uh, the japanese embassy as some of the kofipo did and and i know that um keith you went last year but yeah. she, they may decide that maybe i'm not the person that they want to go and, and <laughs> i want to cause uh, no i don't want to cause any trouble you know they're new generations all i want is, um, I bet. Say, please, educate your children, you know? Yeah. And right. Uh, Elizabeth, Elizabeth, Elizabeth's book with Cecil, or Sec, as we yes. call him, um, is is this month's draw, and I haven't honestly done it yet. Uh, I'll try and do it before we go up North Norfolk. But it's uh, that is yeah. Elizabeth's book. Can you see it all, everyone? Yeah. yeah. Uh, and so that's this month's, and that is donated by SEC, which we appreciate. Uh, next month's is to war with the walkers. Okay. So, um, actually, she did donate the book as well. Now, um, we have got um, Jonathan Moffat now. He's now a member. He hasn't been very well since he told me he'd like to come to the video meetings. Uh, but he hasn't been very well since last September. Um, but he said hopefully he will be joining us at some of the meetings, which would be great because yes. his expertise in research is brilliant. So, um, and he is a nice chap. So hopefully we will see Jonathan at the meetings. Um, I did ask Keith Bettany if he could make it, but of course he, he said that's awkward. The times are awkward in Australia, which is fair enough. Um, but, um, Keith and, and, um, Jonathan Moffat, they're both uh, members of the charity group now. Um, so, uh, right, Did we've got to 11. I, yeah, go I, on then. I, shall I go and get the stone that Keith sent to me? You know, that oh, yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that. yeah. He sent, he sent, Keith sent me a load of pictures because you know his dad, um, Des Bernie painted a lot in the camps. Yeah. Uh, and Keith 
pulls himself down a bit because he says he's not an artist. But he, he sent me loads of pictures of his stones he paints. And he says um, he's been giving them away to his friends. And he sent one to Barbara, um, which is the feeble one. Uh, all right. That go. is a stone he collected off one of the beaches in Australia. Yeah, I challenged so him. That was, I yeah. He was showing the stones. You have to talk, his, Barbara, so that it highlights you. Oh. Uh, on the yeah. back, he, he signed it. Um, and he's put, of course, where you can get in touch and have a look at his dad's paintings. But he said he got a few yeah. qu queer looks when he took it to the uh, post office to post to me. You know, mm -hmm. and they said, what's in it? And they said, he said, a rock. You know, well, why are you sending a did, rock? Yeah. Did you see the picture of the koala? <laughs> yeah, it was beautiful. I, I like the koala. I yeah. like the koala because he'd shaped it into the actual stool, hadn't he? The face. Yeah. And it really yeah. did look nice. But... He says he's not an artist, but I, th I thought he's done quite a, quite quite well with them. I thought they were quite yeah. nice. But I mean, it, uh, oh, uh, over here special. though, yeah, the the feeble one, yeah. But over here, I mean, they, they actually my my daughter does do yeah. But my daughter does do stools, but she doesn't do paint them. She makes pictures of them. Um, so there's quite a market over here. I say that I think they're worth quite a bit. If he if he went into a car boot, but he said no, he's he's been or craft there, but he's been giving them away to his friends. But the other thing <laughs> he does with them is that he goes and um, it's it's there's an, a sort of a group, a big group across Australia where they they leave them in places and people yeah. will go pick them up and replace yeah. them with one of theirs, which I thought was a really <laughs> nice yeah, idea. Good, actually. Yeah. Yeah, they used to do something over here like that, didn't they? Where yeah. they used to leave yeah. things lying around yeah. and you pick yeah. them up. Oh, Just dear. trying to think of the name of it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, um, I, I think we're done well. It's just gone 11. Should we stop the meeting here? Because I think it's been a good meeting, everyone. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, much, it's yeah. been a nice meeting. Um, if we stop the meeting here and the next meeting is on the 18th, uh, of this month, which is a Wednesday evening at seven o'clock. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I've got it right, sir, because I forget when I write them. Uh, so I think yeah, I, that was seven, wasn't it? Yeah, Barbara, seven o'clock on a right. Wednesday. Yeah, I came on yeah. at seven o'clock, Barbara. Seven o'clock. Yeah. Seven o'clock. <laughs> right, See you on and uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I hope uh, I hope Susan will join us again, yeah. Susan. I hope you'll join us again. It's it, it's not. Oh, that's in the in, yeah. It's in the evening. All oh, right. Okay. That's an evening meeting yeah, uh, after work, of course. <laughs> no, we we tried it. Uh, they want to. Some of the members wanted to try it a couple of months back, and I think that's caught on. Uh, so we said seven o'clock Wednesday evening. And that's the 18th. It was halfway through the month, but this was, uh, you know, the weekend meeting. Um, right. And that seemed to caught on everyone. Everyone want to carry on with it, don't we? Yeah. Well, we can for a little longer anyway. I'll certainly, yeah, I'll certainly try and make this one if I can. Yeah. So, uh, and again, we'll we'll find out a little more about Java. Uh, right. Sumatra, brilliant, um, brilliant for that, Kevin, about Sumatra. We'll find a little more about Java. I don't think, to be honest, the fighting didn't go on too long in Java, did it? Because the Dutch uh, threw in the towel quite early. Uh, so um, we, and of course the British had to follow because the Dutch surrendered Java and that was their their country to surrender. Um, so I don't think there is too much to go on in Java. Um, Sumatra... We could cover the ships leaving, but they left late February, didn't they? I think we're talking about the ships, uh, uh, the evacuation ships left. Yeah, 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 yeah about end of February. February. 11th, 12th, and 13th of February. Yeah, but, but that was Singapore, but the ones in the west coast of Java, of uh, Sumatra, left for Colombo. Yeah. 
Yeah. They, they might have gone like, on. Yeah, they sort of lead off, lead off the tang, early, I mean. early March. Yeah. Like, yeah. I don't think it was really after March. That was been it. No. So Java we'll talk about, and I'll have a good look like I did last time and try and find some bits and pieces all the way through the war. Uh, I mean, we've covered D-Force that left for the railway in March, 43, so that, that's 43. Uh, 44, 45. Uh, March is a bit awkward, isn't it? But anyway, we'll, we'll have a look and we'll cover March next meeting. And we will talk a little bit about Java. Is that okay what's with everyone? What was happening? What was happening in Burma in March? Because that must that must have been when the some yeah, must have been taken yeah. prisoner round round yeah. about March then, because the Japanese must have been moving across, weren't they? On the ninth yeah. of March, nineteen forty-two, mm. Japanese troops entered Rangoon, Burma, which was abandoned no, by British see. two days earlier. And it appears yeah. that the Japanese are in control of Java, Burma, and New Guinea. So when must, did must we, be quite when, a few taken prisoner there. Yeah. Yeah. When did we push back Java? I can look, I, I, I push back into Burma. Um, I, I'll have to look that up. I'll, I'll do yeah, that for next so. meeting. I'll look up. I, I can't have remember what I write now. I, I honestly. Right? I, we never seem Some to cover of, Rangoon Jail, do we? Well, I've got the list of Rangoon Jail, but I haven't put it on. Uh, that is actually in our list. I think I put it on to the OneDrive. Uh, that is the right. full list of the Rangoon um, Jail, you know, uh, so that, who were there. Is that a War Office file or is that a... Um, I'm going to say file. goodbye to you folks and I'll see you on the 18th. I'll see you on Tuesday. Sorry, interrupting. Uh, but yep. I need to go. Okay. okay. Yeah. See you later, Barbara. Right. Yeah. I'll I'll just stop record now.